Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to attempt to load the Achilles firmware onto an Ishin Pro 58 diversity receiver. Now I say attempt because I'm 50-50 on pulling this off so far. This was the first receiver I received and I could not get it to work at all. So I'm going to look at that and show you what didn't work for me and some theories I have about it. This one I've just finished and gotten it done and this is the one that we're going to try it on. Now you can see just at a glance there's already a difference. It's very obvious. Now it's a little thing but the screen protector has a green tab versus a red tab. That obviously doesn't have anything to do with anything but it does show these were made differently. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera, but the one that didn't work has a much whiter paint on it. I, I don't know exactly why. Here's probably the biggest deal. The circuit board on the one that didn't work for me is far, far thicker. Again, I don't know if this shows anything other than the manufacturing process has changed or they're made in different locations and maybe some of them just don't work. So I've kind of made a mess of it at this point. So what I tried to do with this one was connect to the two pins that we have to look at here and I connected on the front first and I couldn't get that to work. And I'll show you what doesn't work looks like in a minute. I tried it on the back to see if I could get a better connection that way and that didn't work. Theorizing that the trace wasn't actually connected to these pins anymore, I tried cutting the paint off of the trace and soldering directly to the wire. I know a couple people have gotten that to work. Did not work for me. At this point, I've pretty much just written off that this one is going to be running the Ishin firmware. That still works fine. And you know what? It's not terrible. It's not Achilles, but it's not terrible for the price. It's pretty good and it'll work fine for some of our tests. So when it doesn't work in the ST-Link software, it basically says cannot connect to target. It says some things to try. None of that works. It just doesn't, doesn't work. This one, I simply soldered onto those pads directly and it worked immediately. Now, if you've watched any of the other videos, you might have seen people solder to pads underneath here. There are big flat pads to solder to make a really easy connection. Those are gone. Those are just not there on the new ones. So if you find those aren't there, well, you're not alone. But on this one, I was able to solder to here and here and make a connection. So that's what we're going to try on this other one. I have a Weller soldering station here. It's a WES-51, and I have bought some extra tips. And these are the smallest tips, the finest tip that I can get. Because these pads are really, really tiny. I actually need to clean that off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get this so you can see it on camera. I will do the right one first and I just want to get a little solder on here. There we go. That's really all I want. Just enough to stick to the pad a little bit. Okay, then I have my ST-Link tool. Now this one may look different than yours. Make sure you look on the diagram for where the wires are connected. This is totally different. I have a couple of them and they're, they're both totally different. So make sure you look. On mine, I have the green wire connected to the SWCLK and the blue connected to the SWDIO. So the DIO one connects here and the CLK one connects here. I've already got my wires stripped and tinned. I've got some just solder on here. So I'm gonna try and just get these connected just barely. And all I'm basically trying to do is heat them so they connect and they don't short. That's all I care about. There we go. And it's really not as hard as it looks. If, as long as you have a fine tooth soldering iron, it's really not that bad. You don't need super strength connections here, although I've abused it and carried it around by these wires. I shouldn't do that, but I have, and they've stayed on. So then also on here, we have a five volt and a ground connection. So I've got my red or purplish on the five volt and the gray on the ground. These connect on the back. It's a little hard to tell from some of the pictures which way it goes, but so when you're looking at it face on, reading the letters there, on the back, the bottom pin is the five volts. So we connect that all the way on the bottom. And then the third one up is the ground. So there, nope, I missed it, see? Watch what you're doing. There we go, right there, just like that. So now we should be able to plug it into the computer. So when you do this, the receiver will just boot up and it will show Ishin just like normal. So it'll look fine there. And you go to target 
and options bytes. And what you have to make sure of is this readout protection is disabled. So then hit apply and that will read some data. And that means this works. So this one worked for me. I This step would fail if it wasn't working. So I'm two for two with the red screen protector. So now what we do is target and program. Okay, so you wanna to go to achillesfpu.eu slash downloads and download the latest version. So here, oh, for this one, we're using the Achilles Plus for Isheen. So this is the one we wanna download. We'll download it, save it, unzip it, and you want this hex file. So save that somewhere where you can access it. Here I browse to that and I've got it set. I wanna restart after programming. I'm just gonna hit start. So there we go. Now it's gonna reboot with Achilles and it will give me my serial number. So there we go, that's the serial number that we need. So now we have to go back to the Achilles website. So now I'm gonna click up on buy. So here I wanna shop and there's only really one thing to buy right now. I'll add this to my cart and I'll click view cart. There we go, proceed to checkout. I'm just gonna buy one copy. Okay, so here is where we go do the checkout. So here, very carefully, you wanna put in the three serial numbers that you see here in the exact same order. One, six, four, five, eight, nine, two, eight, eight, three, five, three, three. One, one, two, five, six, five, six, eight, six, six. Now double check it. I'm gonna double check this real quick. So that's all good. So now I'm gonna go pay through PayPal. I'm not gonna show you that. So now if I go to my account and look at orders, so here now I have two orders. One's completed that I already did, that's on the working module, and one is processing. So what will happen is they will add the serial number to the firmware. So when I receive an email saying it's available, I'll go re-download the firmware. We'll take a look at that when it happens. Now we wait. Don't leave this plugged in for the hours, because it could be hours. It could be 15 minutes, it could be up to 24 hours. So don't leave this plugged in and powered on while you're doing that. So I checked it in the morning and it looks like it took about four and a half hours for it to get added, which really isn't too shabby at all. So now what you have to do is actually go back to the Achilles website and just download the firmware again. You can't reuse the same one. There's no way to plug it in. What happens is your serial number gets added to the code itself. So you re-download it and then it will match the serial number on your module and everything will work. So we'll just re-download this again. Here, I'm just gonna take this hex file and override the old one. So now I've got it downloaded. We go back into STM link and we'll plug this module back in. Now it's gonna boot up and look for the serial number again. Then all we do is just re-upload this new firmware again. So we'll go through here to options bytes. There we go, and apply, and then program. Choose my firmware. And then upload it. Hit start. There we go. So now it should reboot and actually load, hopefully. That looks good. So now what you have to do is actually go through the calibration process. And this is pretty much required before you can set it up. The instructions though are pretty good. They're available on the website, but here it'll tell us right on the module. Just press a button. There we go. So there it says, remove the antennas, done. Set up VTX in 25 milliwatts. So I'll show you that in a minute. Move one meter away and then click okay. So here you leave these off. You just don't attach antennas to it and you just kind of point this in the direction of the drone or the VTX at least. So I've got my Holy Bro Copus here just kind of sitting, hanging out and I've programmed it for 25 milliwatt. So I just have that on now, then I'll go back to the module. So I'll just press this button again and it will go through and start scanning and do a calibration. There you go, so it calibrated itself and now it's gonna reboot. Now it's fully set up and ready to go.
I've got all my options, I can do scans, I can do whatever I want. So I'm not gonna go through the full setup and process and usage of this module today. This was just about getting the firmware loaded. Honestly, I wanna play with it a little myself before I do that. So I've got it unplugged here, I'll just disconnect the power. These, I've got my soldering iron. These will just come off real easy. So that way, if a new version comes out that I wanna install on there, I can just reattach it. Now, if a new version comes out, my serial number will still be saved in it, so I will not ever have to re-upload or anything. Any future versions that come out, all I have to do is download them and load them on here in the exact same way, and it'll be good to go. So you also can power the module from the goggles. So I'm gonna put these in my Falcon goggles. I'll go ahead and take off the double stick tape here. Slide this in there. There we go, that's good and solid. So now, I've still got this ports of accessible so if I want to upgrade this in the future I can do it from inside the goggles even though I've kind of taped it in I don't want to have to take it out all I have to do is power this and it will let me do this upgrade in the future just from the battery while it's installed in the goggles I don't have to have it connected to the ports on that module so there I'm ready to go everything is all set and I can fly this now, now I will probably put a cover on here I'm working on getting one print up that'll fit nice but even with the double stick tape on here it'll hold on pretty solid Ready to go, ready to test it out. Now, once I get it all figured out, I'll be back and show you that stuff. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below and let me know what else you wanna see. Just an overview of the module. Do you wanna see the OSD option for it? It's kinda tricky, but I'd be willing to give it a go. I have some ideas, but I would like to know what else you would like to see for this. So until next time, remember, teeny tiny pencil tips are your friend.